We are live on call in. You're listening to the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I am your host, Jay Cena. Really excited about this partnership with Call In. Think Twitter Spaces, but even better, a live audio podcasting app where we can talk all things Niners about once a week moving forward. For those of you watching after the fact here on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to us here on the 49ers Report by using that link down below. And for those of you listening here on Call In, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon. Therefore, anytime we go live right here on Colin, you'll be able to join the show. So what's really cool about Colin is that I'm able to answer all of your calls. So hop into the caller queue if you want to ask me any questions. D is up next to kick off today's show. I'm going to make you the next caller. You're on board. Make sure you hit that microphone icon to unmute yourself and then tee off with anything that you have for me. D, I'll wait for you to unmute yourself. Make sure you do that. Also, if you are following us here on Colin and your microphone isn't working, go into your settings button and allow access to your microphone. D, I did hear you though, so unmute yourself and ask me anything you want. What's up, Chase? Uh, big fan of the show. Uh, I want to preface this question with I think Trey Lance is going to be really great, but do you have any concern as far as with when it came to his knee strain and his uh, was a bruised finger he had? Yeah, he, he chipped a bone on one of his fingers early in the year, leading up, I believe, to the regular season. It was so long ago that I kind of forget up to this point. That knee strain did happen in his first career start on the road against the Arizona Cardinals, and I hated the game plan that day. I thought that Kyle Shanahan called way too many quarterback design runs for Trey Lance, and he opened himself up to just getting beaten and battered by that really physical Arizona Cardinals defense, which at the time was rolling. And I think a part of the play calling strategy that day was that Trey Lance purely wasn't ready to dissect the defense from a passing perspective. And that's why they wanted to utilize his athleticism. But I thought within that game, he got better as a pocket passer and was able to unlaunch a couple of really, really impressive throws. Now, am I concerned about the injuries moving forward? I'm not yeah. really. I, I think that he can be a quality, consistent starting quarterback in this league. I also love what I saw from him in those first two starts. Why is that? Because when the pocket broke down, he didn't always look to run first. He went through his progressions, he kept his eyes downfield, and he looked to pass the ball first before running. And a lot of inexperienced quarterbacks, like Jalen Hurts when he was young, when the pocket broke down and they felt the pocket collapse around him, the first instinct is to take off and run. Trey Lance doesn't have that. I also like the physicality that he brings to the quarterback spot. Yeah, you, yeah there you go. You, you kind of answered my question right there. Awesome, Thank man. You. I appreciate you calling into the show. Anything else? No, that's it. Thank you. Cool. Let's go next to Kyle. You're next up on the 49ers report right here on call. And what do you got? Make sure you hit that microphone button to unmute yourself and you can hop on board the show and ask me anything you want. 49ers news and rumors related. Hey, Jace, what's up? What's uh, up, brother? How you doing? Oh, not too bad. Basically, I was trying to figure out why exactly we did not re-sign Moster. Yeah, the 49ers didn't re-sign Raheem Mostert because I think they're going in a youth movement at the running back spot. And you look at what they did in the draft this year by selecting Ty Davis Price. They get him in the third round this year. They got Trey Sermon in the third round last year. They picked up Elijah Mitchell in the sixth round a year ago as well as they took two backs in the 2021 NFL draft. And with Raheem Mostert... He's got that 4-3 speed. What he did in 2019 was awesome. I thought he showed some flashes in 2020, but what's been the consistent theme with Raheem Mostert? He's been injured a lot. He's also a little bit older. He was going into the final year of his contract, and while he could have came back making about, let's say, 3 to $5 million per year, that's not that much money, you can get a younger player in here, pay them less, if not the same, as Raheem Mostert. And in Kyle Shanahan's offense, him and Bobby Turner, who's not going to be with the team this year as a running backs coach because he's stepping aside for uh, health-related issues as he underwent a surgical procedure, they do such a good job of developing running backs. You look at what Kyle Shanahan has been able to do on his running back resume, any back that's on this team ends up being really, really good. And the offensive system, as he runs that outside zone scheme, caters itself to open, opening up gaping holes for running backs to really produce at a premium level. So I think that's a part of it. Also, they just want younger backs 
on this team. So I think that's the thinking within that front office. Let's get guys who are younger, cheaper, as athletic, if not more. And we don't have to worry about an older back who might be a little bit more expensive as well as injury prone. Yeah, but Moster was still averaging 6.4 yards a carry. I understand that, but when was the last time he was available? Last time he was really consistently available was 2019. Injured in 2020, injured yet again in 2021, and I'm actually happy for Raheem Moster. A very fun player for San Francisco, Kyle, because you know why? He's teaming back up with Mike McDaniel. He's actually going to have opportunities more so with Miami than he is with San Francisco to prove that he can still play in this league and display that blazing 4-3 speed. Okay. Well, My I man. Thank you for answering the question. <laughs> no doubt. Appreciate you hopping on board and joining the show here. We're going to go next up to James. I'm making you the next caller. Make sure you unmute yourself and ask away. All right, Chase. So, um, having uh, lived in San Francisco in a few years, used to follow the Niners much more closely than I did. So, thanks to you for the show. Um, do you feel like momentum is kind of fizzling out around this team right now? You know, Super Bowl a few years back, NFC Championship game, and now I feel with the move away from Jimmy G, Debo out in the trade, McDonald leaving for the uh, the Dolphins job. It's like I feel this off season is kind of been a downer for uh, for what I perceive it as. So I just want to get your take on the vibe around the team and just expectations of what the fan base should have going into 2022 off of a, you know, a close loss in the NFC Championship game. I think there are a couple of components to this, right? You look at the 49ers roster right now, they have premium and premier players on both sides of the ball. Trent Williams is the best left tackle in the game. You have Debo Samuel. Hopefully he comes back in 2022 and beyond as he signs that contract extension. That's the hope and expectation, at least for me. Brandon Ayuk, very good number two wide receiver. George Kittle, one of the best tight ends in the game. Then you shift over to defense. Eric Armstead from the halfway point of the season on was one of the best D tackles after he switched interior from edge. Nick Bosa had 15 and a half sacks. Fred Warner, the second highest paid linebacker in the game. You paid Charvarius Ward $14 million per year. Jimmy Ward is a very good safety. What's the theme of what we're talking about here? The Niners have a bunch of really good players and, in my opinion, a top 10 coach in Kyle Shanahan. And they're coming off a year in which they made it to the NFC Championship game. And they were a couple plays away from making it to their second consecutive, uh, to their second Super Bowl, excuse me, over the span of three years. So they didn't need a lot of roster overhauls. They didn't need to make a lot of big splashes in free agency. Now, would it have been a ideal to trade away Garoppolo and clear off $26 million to be a little bit more active in free agency. Yes, but there's that saying out there, a lot of players who are free agents are free agents for a reason because their older teams, they didn't want them any longer. And I think you're making a lot of sacrifices by paying those players a lot of money and maybe not getting the best production after they're out of their primes. I think the Niners wanted to go a little bit younger. I also think they're trying to budget some of that money to pay Debo Samuel and pay Nick Bosa to make them two of the highest paid players at their respective positions. And because the Niners are set at coach, because they have really good players on both sides of the ball, and because I'm a believer in Trey Lance, he's much more dynamic, a lot more athletic, great arm that is reminiscent to me of Josh Allen. I actually think the 49ers offense, James, could be better and more explosive this upcoming season. Appreciate it, Chase. Thanks a lot, man. No problem. We're going to go next up to Brian. Welcome back onto the show. What do you got for me, Brian? And I see Jeffrey and Edgar, you're next up as well. Hey, buddy. Just want to try this again because I might not have explained it very well. Um, the thought process that I have with Jimmy is, you know, I'm assuming that you saw the the interview that Lynch had. I mean, uh, yeah, John Lynch had where he explained that once Jimmy had that surgery, it completely stopped all conversations about a trade and my thought process behind this is what are your thoughts on the fact that jimmy this might be going the way that jimmy wants that he intentionally potentially intentionally uh, wanted to hurt his trade value to put us in a position to where our only option was to cut him because we need the cap space to be able to just even sign our draft picks and this is going the way that he wants so he can pick his destination rather than being traded I see what you're saying there, and here's some background info on Jimmy Garoppolo's agent. Mm -hmm. It's Don Yee. That's the same agent for Tom Brady, and obviously Don Yee is very aggressive with his clients, but I actually think they misplayed the market. 
I think they thought, okay, we're going to delay the surgery. No, I think Don Yee and Garoppolo misplayed the market. And let me explain that because it is kind of confusing. So I think Yee and Garoppolo, if this is the case, we're kind of going conspiracy theory here, but I love (laughs) open-minded conversations. (laughs) Hey, man, I love open-minded conversations and open discourse, and that's what we're all about here on Colin. So I think Don Yee and Garoppolo, if this is the case, and they didn't want to inform the Niners about that shoulder surgery, and they wanted to delay it, they thought that they were going to put the Niners into a corner, back them into that corner, where they were going to be forced to outright release Garoppolo, which then would have led to them, Don Yee and Garoppolo, being able to choose their destination. And they thought, okay, let's back the Niners into a hole because there's no way they're going to move forward with Garoppolo on this team at a cap hit of $26 million. So they're just going to outright release Garoppolo. Then we can pick our destination. A couple of problems with that. The Niners... They're holding out on a Garoppolo trade in hopes that they can still make a deal for maybe a third round pick to get some type of value back for him, maybe in a trade to the Carolina Panthers. In addition to that, the Niners did give up a second round pick. So they want something back for him. And I think Yi and Garoppolo misplayed the market, going back to my original point, because they, like us, did not envision all of this crazy movement taking place. Like, who thought that Russell Wilson was going to be dealt? Aaron Rodgers was going to come back. Tom Brady was going to come out of retirement. Watson was going to get cleared. This quarterback movement has been crazy, and nobody could have predicted this coming. So that's kind of where I come from if we want to go down to that rabbit hole in the conspiracy theory game, which I'm all about. Yeah, it sounds like we're on the same page. It's just that they misplaced it just as much as us because they were not expecting us to hold on to them like this. I see that. I see that. And they thought, okay, we're going to back the Niners into a hole and they're going to have to release them. That ended up not ringing true. Uh, Well, I appreciate you explaining that, man. Yeah, that makes sense. Let's. All right. Thanks. You got it. Let's go next to Jeffrey. I'm making you the next caller. For all of you listening right now here on Colin, as a reminder, make sure you subscribe to us here on the 49ers Report as we're going to be going live, taking your calls once a week. Jeffrey, unmute yourself. What you got, brother? Hey, Chase, how's it going? Good, man. How are you? Good. Uh, As far as the NFL draft goes, obviously the Niners had a pretty decent draft there, and now we're still going in. uh, We're still in the offseason here. Do you think there's any significant upgrades the Niners could still make to try to push them over the hump where they can win the NFC and get into the Super Bowl in 2023? Yeah, I'm looking at that safety position. There aren't many great safeties left after Tyron Matthew went to the New Orleans Saints and signed that deal that pays him around $11 million per year, $33 million in total. I actually think that's a really good deal uh, considering the player that he is. But I think the smartest move that San Francisco can make next is bringing back Joukowsky Tart. I thought he gave this team really good snaps at that safety spot last year. He's 30 years old, but there's not a ton of tread on the tires. I think he's coming off the best year of his career. Yes, everybody wants to rip him for dropping that interception in the NFC Championship game, but I thought him and Jimmy Ward combined to be one of the better and most consistent safety tandems in the league, and I think that back end is really important. Now, the Niners have stacked up that defensive line. I don't think they need any needs. Uh, I don't think they had any needs there, I should say, and I think they're going to be able to generate a lot of pressure on the quarterback, which, of course, makes the secondary's job a lot easier. But at that safety position, I'd rather have Tart as compared to a guy like Tarverius more coming off a torn Achilles or Talanoa Hufanga, who I think is better slotted to be a rotational piece and an occasional safety who can also play linebacker in the box, send him on blitz packages and contribute on special teams as well. I want a veteran back there on a team that's trying to compete for a Super Bowl because sometimes you need a leader back there to set up the defense and maybe take advantage of and cover up for some of the mistakes that happen in the field before the safety spot on that third level. So Jaquaski Tart is a guy who I'd really, really like to target. And then the center spot. If Alex Mack retires, I think that the Niners should make a play for J.C. Treader, who, when healthy, is a very good center. They didn't address center in the NFL draft. And I do like the UDFA signing of Donovan West out of Arizona State. I think he's a perfect scheme fit. Really good on pull box. Very good athlete. Started at all interior offensive line spots throughout his college career at Arizona State. I like him, but as a UDFA, can we expect him to be the starting center when in Kyle Shanahan's offense, he always likes veteran pieces there. And then my last question for you is, if you had to pick right now, who do you think is more likely to get traded, Debo or Jimmy G? I appreciate you taking it. 
No problem. First time, long time for Jeffrey. Thanks for hopping on board and joining the show. I think it's going to be Jimmy Garoppolo. I think they're going to find a resolution as to how to bring Debo Samuel back. And there have been contractual issues between players and the Niners organization before. They always find a way to lock these players up. But here's the theme. They always sign them when training camp gets underway. They did it with Fred Warner. They did it with George Kittle, who when he didn't sign after the Super Bowl back a couple years ago, his agent called it the Valentine's Day Massacre. They ended up signing him to a long-term deal. So I think Debo Samuel, the playbook is very similar. Now, he has made his trade request public. Fred Warner, George Kittle never did. But the point here being, the Niners always wait to hand out these contract extensions. They're willing to pay their homegrown talent, willing to play uh, willing to pay, excuse me, elite players. I think they're going to do that with Debo Samuel. I just think he has to get patient. And after A.J. Brown signed that extension with the Eagles, paying him about $25 million per year, that's good news for Debo and his camp because I think he can get something in the neighborhood of $25 million per season. Before we get some more calls, for those of you listening on call-in, get into the comment section. For those of you watching here on YouTube, how would you grade the 49ers roster after the NFL draft? A, B, C, D, or F. Give me your letter grades on call-in. Give me your letter grades here on YouTube. And for those of you watching on YouTube, thanks for watching the show.